Well, hey, my friend, it's Matt Tommy. Listen, so glad that you're with me on the podcast today. You know, pricing your artwork, as we all know as artists, can be a real pain in the derriere. <laughs> it is something that confuses and overwhelms and frustrates artists, and it has for years, and it probably will continue to be, unless you know really the, the formula, the strategy to be able to price your work easily and confidently with profit in mind. I've actually been able to do that over the years in developing my own art business. I want to share some keys of that with you today, but not only just some key strategies, also I want to share some stories. I've actually got three of uh, three powerhouse women, actually incredible artists who are a part of my Created to Thrive Artist Mentoring Program. They're going to be joining me in just a moment and telling me about their story, their journey about pricing their artwork, how uh, things have changed for them since they started using uh, these strategies in their life and really starting to think about profit in the way that they're uh, growing their business and pricing their art and just how life can be a lot better and, and all the stress can change when you start thinking about pricing in a healthy way. So stay tuned. All right, you're going to love, love, love this episode of the podcast. Also want to encourage you down in the links here in the, in the show notes, you can grab a link to my brand new book, which is called How to Price Your Art. It's a simple, uh, quick read book that gives you not only a great pricing strategy, but also uncovers all of the other major issues that have a big effect on your ability to price your art with profit and sales in mind. Things like perception, things like scarcity, things like the availability of your work, things like your reputation. I uncover how all of that helps uh, to affect the way that you are able to price your art in order to get top dollar. So grab that book, uh, just grab the link right here in the show notes. You can get it on Amazon, either in print or in Kindle. Uh, we've even got an audio book of that coming out soon. And so um, all of that's available right there at the link and, uh, and you're going to love it. All right. So get ready for a great interview with my friends, Monica, Liberty, and Lynette. You're going to love their stories and uh, you can connect to their websites too in the show notes as well to find out all the great things that they're doing in their art life. All right. Here is Monica. Lynette and Liberty. Well, hey, friends, welcome back to this episode of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. Uh, really, really excited to have three absolutely incredible women and artists with me today Liberty and Lynette and Monica. Ladies, welcome. Thank y'all for, for being with me today. Hi. Hi. Awesome. Awesome. Listen, we're talking about pricing your art and um, you guys, all of you are incredible artists in your own right, doing awesome things. Uh, Liberty, why don't we start with you? I and mean, we'll just kind of go around the circle here and maybe let everybody know who you are, what you do creatively, where you are in the world, that sort of thing. And uh, just go for it. Okay. So hi, um, I'm Liberty Worth. I live in Los Angeles, California, born and raised, and um, I'm a fiber artist, which has a lot of different permutations, but it's, it's fabric. And I technically, te I paint with textiles and I also make quilts. Yeah. And I love your work. I, <laughs> as a fellow fiber artist, I'm like, oh, I just, I love it when we have fiber artists in, in what's going on. Have you been doing that a, a long, long time or, or just in, in, in variations? I've yeah. been playing with textiles for 25 years. Wow. Um, I started by taking a, a silk painting class when I was in college and it just kept permutating and I, I funny enough I was real high tech doing textile design corporate and I kept getting lower and lower tech so I now I'm like stitching things with needle and thread and I'm like this yeah. is really funny but yeah I've been doing it for a long time um and it keeps morphing I'm really excited where I am now though so yeah it's actually much more rare to find the textile artists on this side of the country when I went to Asheville for the conference I was like Oh, they're everywhere here. That's it's right. So cool. <laughs> we're as we say in the South, we're eat up with them over here. So we've got we've got a lot of them. So yes, yes. Yeah. So Monica, how about you? Tell everybody about where you are and what you do. And I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. I um I own a studio called the Art Garage. We primarily teach. We're a teaching studio, so we primarily teach kids. Um, some adult workshops, that kind of thing. I um. I do my own 2D art. I like to work in acrylic and oil on canvas, and um. That's that's about it. We've got art camp going, so we are, you know, full full speed full in the summer right now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. And Lynette, one of my favorite people in the world, across the pond. Tell everybody about you. 
Hi, uh, I'm Lynette Penny Gainham, married to the famous Keith Gainham. Um, <laughs> I work in my studio here, Penny Lane Studios, and uh, I work mainly working with wire. I create tree sculptures, they're wrapped tree sculptures, so they're quite unique to the usual ones you'll maybe see about. And I've uh, been doing that for a couple of years. And before that, I painted in acrylics, um, yeah, for a long time, probably since Noah was going about. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And we've, we've just known each other a long time. Lynette, if, if you're a podcast listener regularly, you know that Lynette was one of the first people that I had on our podcast and continues just to be an incredible friend. Now, Lynette, don't, as much as I love fine craft and sculpture and all that, tell me you're still painting. You've not totally left that behind, right? No, I still paint. I definitely still paint. There, I'm surrounded by canvases and paint, so um, it's inevitable. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I, I can't wait to see what the next iteration with you is, honestly, because in my own work, y'all know I've been doing uh, cold wax painting, and um, I just did uh, a couple of pieces, I guess it was a couple of months ago, where I actually built these uh, wood panel, cradle panels, and did cold wax painting on them, but then I inserted baskets into, like I created niches oh, and created nice. the baskets in there. I was like, oh, this is so fabulous. So <laughs> you, never, you never know what's going to happen with that. You right. never know. So it's, that's it. Yeah, you may see a, a tree on a painting before long. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, listen, uh, we're, we could talk about art and process and, and fun stuff all day long. I wanted to talk to you guys about this whole idea of pricing your art, because I know that you all will experience some breakthrough in that area in your life and in your art business. And that just makes a really big uh, difference. So we'll just kind of do this, you know, popcorn wise, whoever's got something, say something, but roll the tape back, if you will, years ago, whatever, you know, talking about this struggle with pricing and, and what that looked like um, for you. I mean, Monica, I, maybe we start with you. You've not only got you know, your own art, but you're also running a business where you're teaching art classes and that sort of thing. So if you don't get the pricing thing right, you don't stay in business too long, right? So right. Yes. talk about that. To be paid every month. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think that that probably was a big help just because I started realizing um, pay, you know, charging for classes. And I, uh, of course, do a lot of kids classes. And so it's easy to see comparable stuff. What do people pay for, you know, cheerleading? What do they pay for soccer? Things like that. And it, yeah it amazes me sometimes like, oh, wow, like there's very, very middle income families that figure it out, make it work. And so, um, of course, I try to price our classes where, um, you know, we stay in that kind of sweet spot where, um, where most everyone would be able to take our classes, but it did help with that mentality of my, um, what I charge for um, my, uh, my original stuff. Um, you know, years back, when you say roll the tape back, I was originally an interior designer. And, you know, when you start thinking like I could get, a, you know, a canvas print or whatever at home goods for $79, and then you're painting this gorgeous stuff, but then you think for me, I would, I would go to home goods and buy, you know what I mean? Something to yeah, cover yeah. my walls. And so <laughs> it, it takes a little bit, I think, to realize that that's not what we're creating as artists. We're not, you know, producing, um, uh, you know, cookie cutter kinds of things. And so um, between your podcast, which was a huge, huge, huge turning mm -hmm. point, that and the mentoring program, just all of that mindset um, stuff that you just keep pouring into us um, slowly, but surely I started kind of realizing like, oh, you know, what I'm producing is different than yeah. <laughs> what you find at Hobby Lobby and things like that. So, um, so yeah, slowly, but surely just raising those prices and realizing that there is kind of a breaking point where you go from if you're pricing it like, let's say Home Goods. I don't know. Does Home Goods do we have that across the country? Am I talking in terms that everybody understands? Did you yeah, know just any kind of big box home decor? <laughs> yes, story, yeah, exactly. Sure, sure. If you're pricing like that, um, people are thinking of that kind of quality. But when you get to a level where um, it says special, like you say, um, it says special. I think that it changes other people's mindsets of what mm. you're creating also, not just yourself. Um, and so that's where, you know, I've gotten to now and not looking back, um, that's really so feeling good. like I'm finally pricing it based on the amount of effort and time that I've put into it over the years to learn. So yeah. that's so good. I'm thinking, you know, Liberty, you and Lynette, both y'all are, you know, creating 
things, you know, items, art pieces that are not necessarily your run of the mill everyday sort of pieces. So maybe let's start with Liberty and then go to Lynette. But I mean, talk about that because I mean, even it, it's maybe a little bit easier to look out on the landscape and see, okay, what people are charging for paintings or things like that. But when it comes to fiber art, I mean, really slow process, that sort of thing. Was that, was that difficult for you? Yeah, well, I actually want to say something also that I do. I also teach art lessons and I've had nice. the same thing. One of my standards is, you know, in Los Angeles is different than other parts of the country. So I've always kept in mind, like, what do I pay for piano lessons? Yeah. And I figure I'm worth that. So <laughs> I, you know, so I make sure with my lessons that I'm always keeping up with my piano teacher. She raises the prices. And I'm like, oh, I guess it's time for me to raise the prices. <laughs> um, so that, that is something that I've kind of used as a gauge is like, the, just like you. Um, so um, a, one thing I learned very early, well, someone told me very early, I can't say I learned it until they told me, but um, was never to try to compete with imports mm -hmm. because that's a different business. Yeah. And I think we really undervalue ourselves as artists in general, but I think there is also a tendency with fiber artists to especially undervalue their work because mm. I don't know why, but it's like, if you go on Etsy and you see someone selling like a quilt, which is what I've, I, I started selling, um, there's people selling them for like 50 bucks and you know, they probably spent a minimum of 50 hours putting, I'm like, yeah. this doesn't even make sense that you're not covering your materials or anything. So um, those people though are often trying to compete with imports mm -hmm. and with home goods stores and things like that. So that was a, that was a, a, the first leap for me, the first step that I had to be like, oh, I have to understand that this is a handmade thing that took, I, it took me a journey of many years to get yeah. here and so many skills I had to get. And then also skills I had to unlearn to really move into my own voice as an artist. And I think, um, the, I think the a big step, a big part of this process is in learning my voice. I've been I've been trying to I don't know it's not to monetize it, but to give value to the yeah. voice that I've sure. that God's really like you know given me. Like as my voice has become more um, sharpened and more specific, and it, it is very different than what other people are making. I'm having to really trust that there's value in that and to not just devalue it just because it comes to me naturally. So that, mm -hmm. that's been a big one for me lately. Yeah. No, you know, I, I'm just thinking this whole idea of, you know, what you said, Monica, and you're alluding to that as well, Liberty, of this idea of what makes your work special. You know, I always talk about this thing of, you know, nobody buys art because they need it, right? We're buying, they're buying the, the connection with you, the connection with the process or the piece or whatever. And unless we are telling that story and creating the perception, um, not only for ourselves, so we believe it, but also for our clients, it, it becomes uh, really difficult to, to be confident with that in the marketplace. So Lynette, what about, what about you? Yeah, I think I've had two really big catalysts of change, uh, one being the mentoring program and one changing to making these tree sculptures in that I had spent years and years um, trying to price things in a, in a range that mm. I thought people would find acceptable, um, which is usually less than, right. <laughs> <laughs> which is usually less than you would like uh, or need. And uh, I think with the mentoring program and with making the tree sculptures, it allowed me to sort of um, clear the board and, and start afresh and, and really value it at what I would like to get for the trees um, and to value myself and value my time and my effort and to try and see them with fresh eyes mm. instead of, and I think it is difficult, like, like it's been said already, when the market's quite flooded with paintings and especially, you know, in the, in the sort of way that I was painting, um, it's more difficult to, to find a price margin in that. Um, Whereas with the trees, it's, I'm kind of able to set that myself mm. and um, and to find customers that value that rather than trying to price them and get the most amount of customers interested. Uh, it sort of narrows it down to people that really value what you're doing. Isn't that interesting? Yes. I feel like when I started um, to, I kind of hit a point where I was trying, I decided, what if I just sell a couple less? And, and sell them, you know, at a higher value. And yeah. I 
I present yeah. myself with a higher value. And I, I definitely like I'm internalizing all these things too, Matt, that you teach us about that. And, but I, I think I, once I decided just kind of to take the step into those deeper waters of like, I'm just going to say, see if, it, if I raise this price and there may be people who say, no, I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, okay, maybe come back if you're interested later. Yeah. But I keep finding that every time I do that, there's, there's still people out there who are willing to buy it. And, yeah. and I even had one this week where I thought, okay, I'm going to raise this price and I'm going to, I know the value of this and I'm going to, and it's a very, it's even a simple thing. And so I kind of, it's a lower value of, of what I make, but it, but I knew that I still wanted to raise it. And the person, like, I always be like, oh, when they don't bat an eyelash at the price, <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh man. Money on the table, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's great. That's so much cheaper than I thought. I'm like, oh, I did it again. I, <laughs> I meant that was the deposit. I meant that was the deposit amount. That's right. And that's right. That's right. <laughs> Did I remember, I remember that? that literally happened to me one time. I was my one of my first big fireplace mantle sculptures that I did. And um, I think I, I everything in me was, you know, I was on charge like $3,300, $3,500, something like that. And I went over to their house and I'm shaking, you know, internally and I'm going to tell them the price. And they were like, oh, that is so great. We are, we had about five or $6,000 budgeted. So this is just wonderful. And I'm like, dang, I, you know, <laughs> I'll never do it again. I'll never do it again. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, I do think it, it, just to parlay about what you said, I think that you do have to keep in mind the sustainability of yeah. what you're doing too. Like, I mean, if you're selling things um, at a, a price where you can't produce them, buy the materials and that kind of thing. Like if you're wanting this long-term, you know, career in this, yes. I think that you do have to remember like, so what do I want my life to look like? Do I want to be working a million hours a week right. and really just kind of giving away my, you know, working $2 an hour, or do I want to price things like you said and sell less of them, yeah. but be able to do my best work and, and have this sustainable kind of pace. Yeah. Um, and of course, I know that that depends on where you are in your journey. If you're just now starting out and learning, well, yeah, you're selling everything as samples, you know, like this, is, I'm, I'm practicing, you know, but I think that, you know, you need to get to a point where you've got this sustainable pace yeah. um, so that, yeah, uh -huh. or you'll burn I out. I started out, I wanted to set the price at a certain level rather than set it too low and then have a bigger hill to climb to try yeah. and get to the price I wanted. So I decided to set it at a bar and then, you know, using this sort of um, 90 day goal uh, within the mentoring program to say, right, within that 90 days, I want to be then charging this. And that was exactly what happened. And so the hill was less of a climb than if I had thought, well, I better start a way down here yeah. and, and slowly make my way up. Um, and I'm really glad I did that. Really glad. Well, and the great thing about it is I always called it my new normal, you know, because every time I would inch that price up or 20% or more and it would sell. I'm like, okay, we got a new price level now. <laughs> this is everything else. And I remember for me, you know, as I started doing things on the wall, as opposed to just functional pieces, like really wall sculpture and that sort of thing, I had to look at the large prices that I was getting for these wall sculptures in how that, uh, in reference to the smaller single work that I was doing. So if I had a, a wall sculpture, for example, that right. I had 10 baskets in it, and it was $4,000, how does that price now reflect on my one piece that you can come in the studio? It raised, you know, that, that rising tide floated all of my boats, if you will, you know, that raised all the prices. And I think that's just a, when you find something that's working in your business and you can start to just in, keep increasing that price. And, and I, I don't know if y'all have found this to be true, but price is a great gauge, if you will, to keep, you from being as y'all are saying too busy because you know it's a great gate if you will you know you can raise that price and you will price some people out of your work but you're getting your best customers and you're getting your most profit and liberty that sounds like kind of what you were you were saying it's, it's a good feeling yeah. in it yeah and i i mean it's funny because i was i was scared to do it honestly yeah. Yeah. and i'm busy i mean i've got commissions booked through the almost the end of the year now oh. and i'm like I didn't see this coming and, and, and I, I just thought, well, you know, I'm just going to take this risk and try to step out a little bit in valuing myself more. But also one thing that was really interesting was 
changing my target market. Like I went mm. through the client avatar yeah. section, right? Yeah. And, and I thought I had defined who my avatar was, <laughs> but the avatar was really more just people who were like me or were fans, but not actually buyers. Right. And so big difference, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and I, you know, in all your talks, Matt, you're always like, it takes time. It takes time. And I'm like, come on time, you know, like, <laughs> but, but it has developed. And as I realized, I'm like, oh my gosh, actually I was looking, barking up the completely wrong tree. Like mm. if I'm trying to sell to people who are artists and like, they want artist prices, right. They want like a deal or something. Cause they're their friend. But if I'm like, if I'm selling to people like Recently, I started selling to a couple like doctors and, and, and people who they charge a lot for their time. Sure. So they look at something that took me 50 hours to make. They see a totally different value. And to them, it's a deal. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's where like, once I started realizing that my customer was a totally different person than I had been thinking of, that also really changed the way I saw myself and my time spent and treating myself like a businesswoman and not like I am both an artist and a businesswoman. I'm not just somebody who's like doing this in the side of my life, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That's so huge. What about Monica, Lynette? I mean, changing that in your in internal mind of just realizing I don't have to price based on what I think, but I need to price based on my avatar. I mean, that's a, that's a huge game changer, isn't it? Completely. I think um, it's, we are rarely painting or creating, sorry, I'm a painter, um, <laughs> but creating for people that like, our, our budget. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I am, I really, really would have to save for a really special, unique piece of art, but there are so many people out there and my, my client avatar would be one that like, that would be kind of the norm for them. And, sure. um, and I think that this has just been my experience, but um, the higher the price range, the less headaches, the less specific, like nitpicking, the less agree. asking for a discount, <laughs> yeah. the less all of that. Yeah. Um, and so it is, it's just, it's just, yeah, it, it really is a big game changer. But I do think mindset is a huge thing. You've got to be, you know, you've got to step into the fact that, okay, not everybody can do this. And God's done, you know, put this in me and I put the time in and, and, if somebody doesn't want to pay the price, a lot of times that is a budget thing. It is not, that's not, it's not a juried event where they're like rejecting your work. Right. It's just the fact that, well, you know, they're, they might need to go to home goods. <laughs> or, or a timing thing. It may be that they want it, but they, it may be next year before they can get it. And they're Absolutely. just in the process of. Right. Right. Whatever. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. What about you on that? Yeah. I think as you get us so as the client um, avatar, if you like, um the price increase or you know the range i think they want more of you in the piece mm -hmm. they're, they're much more interested in it having your flavor and yeah. your uniqueness there is that collaboration you know so that you're putting into it what they'd like but it's i think there's a much more of a value on it having your signature style yeah and your influence on it Whereas when the price points further down, it's like you said, you, you almost get more hassle. You get yeah. more, well, I want this and I want that. And can you add this and can you add that? Whereas someone who really values what you're doing, they almost they almost want to say, Lynette, just do it. Just, yeah. just do what you do. And, you know, as long as it's in these colors, you know, go for it. Or this and size or whatever. A, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's such a freedom mm -hmm. to create. It's wonderful. Yeah, I, co I completely agree. I mean, I, I remember when I started making the shift into working in luxury homes and everything, and somebody's bringing you into a two, three, five million dollar house, and there's this huge wall, and they're like, so what do you think? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, they're going to tell me what they think, but that, but they really value you. That's why yeah. they've sought you out. They could have anything there, but they've chosen you, and they want your input, and that is Oh my gosh, like you're, we're all saying, it's so much more fun to work with people like that that value you, but you're the one. A lot of times we think, well, it's them that's got to find us. I think you got to find yourself internally yes. in order to be able to project that into the marketplace. And when you Absolutely. begin to talk and believe and, and price and make and, and communicate your story like that, that attracts people that are looking for that because so many people, I think, I, like you're saying, you know, Liberty with those doctor group or whatever, 
so many people value or, or, or see value attached to uh, what you charge for things. And so if you're charging $200 for something that maybe should be $2,000 or $20,000 or whatever, for people that really buy art and people that want to have that special experience, that makes a difference. And it doesn't mean you're gouging people. It just means that you're putting realistic value on your work. That's not based always on what, what you think it should be, but on, on what they think it should be. So it shows you the necessity to get the heart and mind part of yourself in order because yeah. you can't expect someone to value your work when you don't value it yourself That's because right. you don't value yourself. Um, it makes a huge difference. It's, it's more than half the battle yeah. when you yeah. start to really believe that you're worth it. Absolutely. Definitely is. Now, people price work in different ways, um, you know, in the mentoring program and in this new book I've got out about how to price your art book. We talk about, you know, by the foot, by the square inch, by, you know, the hour, by different ways. I'd love just to kind of get an idea of what you guys are doing to come to the price uh, that you're charging for your work. So maybe Liberty, you're at the top of my screen. So we'll come down for you. <laughs> we'll go down for you. Yeah. Um, well, I have like two families of work that I do. And one, like I said, is like custom quilts for people, which have a much less complex design. So those ones I really base on hours and complexity. And although, like I said, last week I learned, uh-oh, I need to be raising that up too. <laughs> So even though I thought I had already doubled it, it was not quite enough. So um, so that I do base that on complexity. If someone comes to me for a very e with a very easy design, then I'm like, yeah, that's cool, you know, and and materials and size and all this stuff. Um, but my my textile paintings, as I call them, um, those I pay I base on size, and because I'm doing something that other people are not doing, it's a little more arbitrary, and I'm really just kind of riding this wave, trying to figure mm -hmm. it out as I go. Yeah, yeah, awesome, Monica. Um, I, I charge per square inch um, and and then there's a couple um, couple things that might adjust that like if they want a, like a, a frame with a really really deeper turn things like that there's some additional um, cost to that I, also if it involves I do people a lot mm -hmm. um, and if it's more of like a portrait style I will charge if there's more than one face um, just because trying to sure. adjust and making sure all the highlights and shadows you know, or across the board, it takes a lot more effort. So um, that's what I charge uh, for commissions. Um, I charge a lot more, but it's still kind of a per inch mm -hmm. uh, thing. And then um, for my personal stuff, which I still, still to this day would much rather just work on, you know, something that is just completely inspiring to me and, you know, I just <laughs> go wherever it takes me. Um, but that's also a per square inch price. It's just a little less. I just charge a lot more for commissions. And um, I'm finding starting in probably 22, I'm going to raise my price again, simply because I'm like you, Liberty, I'm booked through the rest of the year um, because my studio does take a lot of time. So I, there's just a certain amount of time that I can put towards commissions. And so yeah. now that I'm booked through December, I'm like, well, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Yeah. I should probably charge a little more because that's, again, it's just a few slots per year, really, when you think about it. So, Absolutely. Um, but it's still per inch for me, per square inch. Well, and yeah. that's that whole idea of, again, your price being a gate and also that scarcity, which so many people, I know when I first started out and I had to tell somebody, it's going to be a month or it's going to be now six months to, <laughs> before you can get a piece, you think internally, they're not going to want it. But the opposite is true. People yeah. want more because yeah. they figure, oh, everybody else is getting, well, I better get in while they're getting, good. you know, yeah. she must be, or he must be very desirable. And so I, I should really do that. So yes. You know, I Lynette, will, what about I will, you? Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Monica. Uh, sorry. Let me just say, um, I found, thank goodness for COVID because yeah. even with our classes, we limited the number of kids in our classes. And before I would just pack them in, make it work, you know, but yeah, because yeah. of COVID we have a certain amount. And I mean, my studio is busting at the seams and my camps are full, like packed yeah. full because all of a sudden people would log on and they'd so, say sold out and um, they're sold out because there's limited seats. But now, yeah. I mean, they're starting to register for the fall and looking at the spring and, and I'm realizing with, you know, no matter what it is, whether it's classes or what we're producing, what we're creating, um, that scarcity to say, even if we go into, okay, for 2020, I've got, you know, 12 slots for commissions yeah. and you've got one of the. 12 or whatever there it is it's a real thing my goodness it absolutely is a real thing I mean we we went from you know like our conferences and that sort of thing we went from 
you know, trying to get people to register all year for conferences and all that kind of thing to, I started doing this thing um, that I, you know, just, I actually read about it in a book and I was like, I wanted this to work. So I started having people pre-register to be able to register. Like you got to pre-register to register. And it got people to raise their hands and say, I'm interested. And we started selling at our conferences in one day. And then I started doing the same things for my art classes. Like I would put out a survey in November and say, I got X amount of spots this year. What do y'all want me to teach? And I would come back with the classes and all that. And then I would tell them, all right, I'm going to open the doors on this day. And literally within a few hours, all of my classes for the whole year would sell out. And it was just like, what is that about? But it's, it's a natural human instinct of, of that FOMO, you know, people don't want to miss out. And, and, and when there's a limited amount, people want to do that. And so we're just, you're learning to use that to your advantage. And I think it, you know, rather than somebody thinking, well, that's kind of a slimy way to do it. I don't, I think it, you're just utilizing what we all know is true. We all need a reason to make a decision. And when we as business people give people a compelling reason to make a decision, uh, to purchase, then that uh, enhances that experience for, for both ends. So Lynette, what about, what about you? Um, when I'm pricing, I've got a sort of couple of tiers um, that I use. I, I, I price per square inch as well, even though we're meant to use centimeters and meters. <laughs> in Britain, there's a lot of us still use inches. We're, we're stuck in old school. Um, and it will depend, especially if a tree's got leaves on it. That's way more work than a, a bare tree uh, and then obviously the more little extra things that go on but yeah I'd say I've got a two-tier price range um, yeah and that is it's working great that's good mm -hmm. and you know I think for everybody even in as I'm writing this book about this and as I'm teaching in the mentoring program any kind of pricing strategy or formula that you're using I think is is only good to get you in the range in the because pricing is much more I think an art than it is a science so I think like for me what I did over the years is I kind of figured up based on hours like how many hours does it take me to make a basket and then once I'm assembling that and but then you got to put in all those other costs right your studio and your internet and your rent and your blah, 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 all that kind of stuff and work all that in that kind of gave me which is kind of how I teach now what I call your, your studio price. That's like this, when I charge this much, I know that I'm making profit and all of my regular expenses are covered. That's the basic minimum that I can charge. And then from there, as we all know, if it's a really detailed commission, if it's, uh, you know, something that's going to take a lot more time or a lot more ingenuity, or uh, if I've got to travel to install it, or if I've got to have client meetings involved, all of that's going to, you know, kind of give you this uh, ability to adjust the pricing as needed. And, and sometimes, you know, I, I had a lady one time that told me, uh, one of my mentors early on, I, uh, her name was Billy Ruth Suttoth. And, uh, she was selling baskets for $5,000, like back in the nineties. I mean, just incredible artists. And I said, Miss Billy Ruth, I said, how did you learn to, you know, price your art? And she said, well, I just always figured I never wanted to charge less than I would want to do it for again. And I thought that is such a, you know, because we've all done that, right? Where you yep. make something and you sell it <laughs> and you're like, dang, I, you know, I should have charged twice as much for that. And so you just, you got to know that you feel good about it uh, as an artist so that you're not hanging yourself out to dry. And um, so yeah, that's, that's just huge. So ladies, I, you know, I know as folks are sitting out there going, okay, I probably need to readjust my pricing and, and begin to think about it. Why don't we just go around any, kind of final thoughts or encouragement for somebody that's out there that is charging based on what their friends say it's worth or what they think it's worth, or they're not charging what they need to now that they've, they've heard you guys talk, what would just be a, a final encouragement for them as they're starting that process? I think my biggest advice to people would be to work on developing your own voice. Mm. Um, because once you have an established voice and you got enough work under your belt and confidence in what you're doing, then you become like we've talked about already, almost like so that it's price is not an issue anymore. Yeah, yeah. People start coming to you saying, I want that. I want what you have and what you do. I'm not really concerned about price. And like, I never thought I would hear that. And I've heard it multiple times this year. And, and because it's, but it's really because I've spent all the time in the back end doing, yes. develop, doing the hard work, developing my voice, understanding 
what makes my work my work and my work different than everybody else's. So I would just encourage people just to keep plugging away at that because once that is locked in, then the path really becomes a lot more clear. Yeah, it's a game changer. Yeah, yeah. Monica, what about you? Um, I think it's a lot of things. Um, I always go back to mindset because I think that that was the biggest game changer for me. And, um, and I don't think I'm alone in that. Um, and, and I uh, completely agree with Liberty that I put the time in, make sure that, you know, you're, you're comfortable that you can somewhat replicate, right. Replicate the same level of expertise over and over and over. Um, but I, a little, you know, just remember that it, most likely your circle is not your clientele circle. Yeah. I mean, so don't price it based on your budget. Yeah. Um, I think that that is, you know, that's a, just keep that in mind. And I really do think that you do the work, the mindset work, you work in the studio, you get yourself to a point where you, you know, feel like you, um, you're, you've got your own creative voice and just do the next right thing. And the Lord, I think will bring, bring the clients. You, you've got to work hard for it. You've got to do the things, but sure, up, I right. think that it's, it's everybody's kind of on their own journey. I, as I was thinking towards just this whole mentality, this whole, you know, conversation, um, that verse in Ecclesiastes that says, um, how can you reduce creations, curves and edges into a plain straight line? I mean, mm. nobody's journey is exactly the same. So um, good. And, you know, all of our journeys take longer, shorter, you know, shortcuts, turns, whatever. But I do think we just do the next thing, whether it's, I need time in my studio or I need to um, get a website together. I need to, you know, whatever. I really think that if we really do listen to the Holy Spirit, put the hard work in, I think that, you know, those, those clients find you, they really do. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Lynette? I think um, I bought into the lie of if I get enough orders and commissions and sales, that I'll get peace of mind because the money will come in. Mm. And I think as artists, we start at it from the wrong end of the scale. And mm. actually, as we value ourselves and we price our work, what it's worth and what we're worth, it's it's like the work smarter, not harder. Yeah, That brings peace of mind. Yeah. That brings rest from worry. It brings rest from stress. It brings rest from the fear of making sales or not making sales you work you work deeper and better and harder but with less panic and less mm -hmm. hurry and less worry about it all uh, when you really value what you're doing and value yourself and what you're doing um you know it's not about the amount of sales that you can make and you're charging 20 pounds and 50 pounds but actually about when you value yourself and you take the time to work on a, a special piece for a good amount and have joy at the end of it, yeah, knowing that yeah. it's worth it. You know, mm -hmm. it's it is, it's it's peace of mind that is priceless. Yeah, it is. And at the end of this episode, I have great joy of being with you guys because y'all are every one of you is just killing it, doing a great job. It's an honor to be able to walk with you and just to hear your stories. Thank y'all so much for being on the podcast today. And guys, I know as you're listening, you're, you're wanting to say, I want to find out more about these incredible trees and, and art quilts and classes and paintings and all this kind of thing. So be sure to click the links that are right here in the show where you can find out about Liberty and Lynette and Monica and all the great things that they're doing. Um, definitely, definitely support them and follow them on social media. So ladies, thanks again for, for being with me. It's been awesome today. Uh, thank you so much, man. Thanks. Thank you.